So in this video, I'm going to deal with the lustering of the cream and sugar set. I already did the tray on accident um, before I had the video. But again, we got the creamer and the sugar. A few of the things that I'm going to do to these, one is accent the little details like the screw heads on the piece and on the back here. I'm going to put a almost like an inspected number or part number underneath. I'm going to sign it again with a stamp underneath um, that will be um, visible you know when it's done and then on the creamer again the stamp and the signature there's going to be all the little nuts here are going to be lustered and this rim is going to be lustered. So to prep something for being lustered, I need to clean it as clean as I can get it without getting it wet. Um, if they're wet, the lusters won't stick to them very well or they'll bubble up. Um, so first, you want to use gloves. Um, this means you won't get fingerprints on them. Any bit of oil will prevent the luster from working right. So I start with the gloves. I try not to get my hands on the outside of the gloves. When I'm putting them on so I don't transfer oil. And I've got dedicated brushes just for luster. You don't want to use brushes that you've used with water when you're doing lusters because water can get in the furls and never really come out and it can wreck the lusters that one you're using or two if you dip in the bottle it can wreck the lusters in the bottle. So, for the majority of the luster on these, I'm going to use the copper luster. I usually put these in a um, porcelain cup that's been glazed, clear, so there's no crazing. Um, it's clean, and in the end, I can wash it out. Um, some people work on glass, some people work out of the bottle. I want to be able to see how thick it is, um, so I use it on white you know, on a white ceramic surface. I put in enough for the piece, and I usually keep a spare piece that I would use the extra on. So that's set. I've already used the brushes today, so they've been cleaned periodically. Then I'm going to take the pieces that I'm going to use, and I wash them with rubbing alcohol. This is 90% of the alcohol. Basically, we get a good amount on a paper towel. So I don't want to rub it, basically. I just want to spread it around. And then dip all the surfaces that I'm going to luster. Another thing to luster is the foot here. I'm actually going to luster it and prop it up so it's not going to stick to the kiln shelf. But that luster will prevent any white from being on the piece, so that this piece will look nearly all metal, which is you know, kind of what I'm shooting for. Luster on a porous surface, or not glassy surface, I guess is more what I mean, um, will be a little bit less shiny, so I don't have to worry about it you know, distracting from the rest of the piece. Once this is clean good, even though it's 90% alcohol, it does still take a little bit to evaporate all the way. And I want to make sure it's evaporated all the way before I apply anything to it. Now when you luster, you're supposed to have a mask on, the fan should be going, but so you can hear on these pieces here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not do it. But you should be using the fan and you should have a respirator. Um, normally when I am working, my, the fan is running and I do have my respirator on. So you've got your brush, it's got the um, luster in it, and you're going to carefully cover just what you want lustered. So I'm going to do this to every screw head on here. And 
and this isn't terribly exciting, so I'm going to kind of fast forward. Okay, that one's done. Go back. Do this one. This one's not yet. This one's not So I guess we'll get a close-up version here. So luster is kind of weird because it's oily. It doesn't move like water does. So you've got to be careful not to apply it too close to a seam. As soon as it gets in that seam, it just spreads. Oh, this is really exciting, right? You get the idea. Do the underside 